So we better get a good winter this year because I've seen some amazing Belay jackets and now I've seen the world's most exciting ice axe, the DMM Cortex. So working here can be really cool for lots of obvious reasons, but what's been amazing this year is we've actually had some samples to use way before the product came out. So the staff got to use a pair of these last winter and were all blown away. They were very well-traveled axes because we seemed to be high-fiving at the door, passing them while the next person went back off to Scotland. These were awesome. Yoink. My turn. And we were all blown away by, well, everything about them. So obviously there's tons of really good ice axes out on the market already. So DMM thought, how can we better them? And I actually do believe they have because this is just phenomenal and so reassuring. So as most of you already know, DMM make pretty much all their products in Wales. So they hot forge loads of stuff. Uh, and so what they did with this one is they remembered their old real classic, the Rebel. You remember that red ice axe that was in Tomb Raider and everyone was selling for lots of money online? Well, this looks a lot like it, but actually I think it's constructed even better. So while I wouldn't suggest you dress up like Lara Croft and jump across a big chasm into some mud the other side, um, they are really good for ice climbing and mixed climbing. So just for reference, these are 50 centimeters long and they weigh at 589 grams, just so you can compare it to other axes. This is probably the biggest thing that's different to all the other ice axes on the market. It's a single piece I-beam construction. So you can see all the way from the head to the handle, it's one piece, making it incredibly strong, like pretty much everything DMM make. So I think this is probably the main thing that gives it an edge over some other ice axes. It's just so reassuringly strong. I was to say, lots of others feel brilliant out there, but sometimes you do wonder whether they're durable enough. And this thing is an absolute beast. You're never gonna snap this bad boy. So the whole ax, the pick and the shaft are all T-rated. So that means they're extremely strong and you can actually build belays and things like that with them as well. Also, the pick is incredibly modular, so you can get different heads for dry tooling, ice, mixed, all-rounders and stuff like that. You can get different hammer and adds as well to go on the back. So when you change the picks, not only do you get the right sort of spikes for whatever you're doing, like ice or dry tooling. Also the angle changes, so that allows the axe to feel quite like a different axe, short of a sharper angle or less sharp, just depending on what you're doing, which is really a nice little feature. And one of the things I think they've got just right with this, which is always quite hard to do, especially when it's quite a chunky beast, is to get the weight just right. So the balance and the swing is absolutely brilliant. It sort of pivots really nicely here when you put your finger in there, so you can do the proper French flick if you're really good at your ice climbing or if you want to hold it nice and solid and do the whole British whack swing you can do that too. I also think it's really nice that it comes with the ice pick but it's the ice tech pick which is T-rated as well so I kind of think this is just the all-rounder I'd use that Scottish winter climbing well I did um, but also on ice as well so you can get a nice sharp point because if you don't know a lot of brands use B-rated ice picks which are basically the same sort of shape, but they'll be a little bit softer so you can sharpen them better to get a real swing into the ice. When you're Scottish winter climbing, it does get a bit terrifying if you're talking in a crack and twisting, you can see it bend a little bit. What you really want is something solid like that, but still gets a really good point on it. Another thing you can also get that isn't sort of shown here is you can get some weights to go on the pick here at the front. Now, if you're climbing continental ice or going to the bend and it's got really good ice conditions, it's probably worth putting those on simply because once you do that little flick and it goes wallop into the, into the ice, it really pulls it in and gets a really good point. However, when I was using these last year, I had those on for mixed climbing as well. Now, obviously whacking turf is really nice, but a lot of the time when you're talking them in cracks, you don't always need it. However, I have found it's nearly like a little cheat because when they're on there, they act like a, like a nut, you know. You can sit them in a crack straight on rather than talking it all the time and pull on it and it feels really reassuring while some other people might be talking it and really worried that once you let go it'll blow and fall out. Another feature that I think people are really going to love about this axe is the fact that because it is all one construction and super solid you can clip in down here whether you're using it with you know a screw gate or to belay obviously you don't belay just off these we have to back something up that's what you've got to do um, or you can do it with your your leashes as well, your freedom leashes. Now in the past, other brands have had trouble with the little eyelets at the bottom here you clip into breaking off or causing an issue with the little spike that sticks out to stick in the snow. So with this, you know it's super, super solid. Do remember when you fall onto an ice axe or if you fall onto an ice axe, they actually hope that things like a freedom leash will break because if you fall onto a static load onto an ice axe, it will create too much force and can cause some lots of other issues. So don't rely on this to you know, say big falls, but if you slump, you know, you're a bit more reassuring than a lot of other axes out there. 
However, DMM thinking of everything, know that not everyone's going to want a carabiner or a little clip in there while you're holding the axe and swinging, because it is sort of nice when the axe pivots nicely in your hand. That's why they have it nice and rounded at the bottom. So they put a little beam, I don't know if you can see it there, all the way across, a little pin, which you can stick some cord through and pull it out the other side, tie a knot in that, and then you can clip your freedom leashes to that as well. Now, they reckon you can get five mil cord through there. We had a bit of a hard time doing that, but finally with a bit of you know, melting and flattening, we got some four mil cord through and did it with that as well. Now they do reckon the little tip is to pull the threads from the five mil out, stuff it through and pull it out. So I'll have a go at that at some point. However, do bear in mind, it doesn't matter too much how strong that is because it is just so you don't drop your axe, not for sitting on and things like that. So obviously these are designed for really technical climbing, whether you're mixed climbing, ice, dry tooling, things like that. And one of the really cool things is when you have swung it in and it's hit hard and you cross your hands, there is absolutely no change. So they've got this sort of dimensions just perfect there. They're actually ever so slightly more aggressive than some of the leading axes in the market, which I don't think holds you back at all on the easy ground, but it does make them feel a little bit more you know, technical when you're on the hard stuff. I don't know if we've ever had a product that we've tried and tested so much before it's actually come out before. Like I say, it was really well traveled, the sample pair last year. We got a nice shiny new pair. And by the time we handed them back a month or so later, the, the DMM rep was pretty impressed how battered they were, how much abuse they'd had, how many routes they'd done. So I was lucky enough to use them on the hardest thing I've ever done. Don't get me wrong, I didn't do much leading, but on the Sioux wall, they felt absolutely amazing. Graham even took these down to Mass and Lees, the dry tooling area in the Peak District, which is nice and muddy. And what was really cool is some of the top dry toolers in the country got to use them as well. And they were really impressed with how good they dry tool on completely overhanging terrain, let alone climb really nice ice up in Scotland. Now, obviously they've been designed for top end climbing and things like that, but I always find these sort of axes actually perform really well, even on the easy terrain. When you're going up a snow gully or the easy ice at the end of a route quite often, I quite like holding it halfway up the axe there. And obviously they've got the molding on there so you don't get cold hands. But what I find is because of the curve, actually your hand doesn't end up in the snow as much as some of the straighter axes. If there is a downside, it's of course that plunging while doing easy snow arettes or things like that isn't as good, but that's just how it is with technical axes. All in all, what an absolute beast, and I can't think of anything that they've got wrong with this.